Did you know that since potatoes and tomatoes are in the same family, that you can merge them together with grafting to create one plant that produces potatoes underneath the ground and tomatoes on the top? Well, today I'm gonna to have a go at creating one of these pomatoes or tomatoes, and I'll share with you the whole process right through to the end. And who knows, if this all works out, maybe I'll be able to make my own ketchup and fries from ingredients grown all on the same plant. So to start this project, we need a tomato plant and a potato plant, so let's get those sorted first. So here I've got some tomato seeds and I'm sowing these into some seedling trays in early spring. After a few weeks I had a bunch of little tomato plants coming up and I just kept them growing indoors by a sunny window while it was still a bit cold outside to plant. Once they had started to outgrow the seed trays I potted them up so they could get a bit bigger before I planted them out in the garden when the weather was warmer. Here I've got a few seed potatoes, two different types, and I've left these in a bright place so they could start to sprout and you can see the sprouts coming out there. It's late spring now and these grow really quickly so they should easily catch up to the tomato plants that I started a few months ago. I'm planting them pretty much as deep as I can in these small pots using a mix of compost and potting mix and there is a reason why I've used these small pots for now and you'll see why in just a little bit. Alright, now that we've got the plants ready it's time to graft them together. We do need some clean tools for this so I'm using some methylated spirits to clean the secateurs and grafting knife. And you don't have to use a grafting knife, you can just use a Stanley knife or box cutter instead, as long as it's nice and sharp. Okay, so what we need to do is take some cuttings from the tomato plants that are about the same thickness as the stem of the potato plants. The tomatoes have gotten really bushy and need a good prune anyway, so I'm finding some suckers or side shoots that are a suitable size for the grafting. I'm now just removing most of the leaves off the cutting because the more leaves you have, the faster the cutting will lose moisture, dry out and potentially die. So I'm just making sure I leave the growing tip intact at the top. Okay, so with the grafting, let's cut this potato plant off at a point that matches the same thickness of our cutting. And I would recommend doing this in a shaded area away from the wind. Now we're going to slice down the middle of the stem a few centimetres deep. Now using the tomato cutting, I'm just doing a long angled cut on both sides to create a V that's about the same length as the slice that we made in the potato stem. It might take a few goes to get it to the right shape, so don't worry if you need to do multiple cuts, it definitely took me a few goes to get it right. Now we can just push the tomato plant into the potato stem, and since we have the same thickness, it should line up on both sides, but if it doesn't, just focus on making sure one side lines up really well, with the outer part of the stem staying flush. Last thing I'm doing is just wrapping it in some grafting tape to hold it tightly together, and I'm just wrapping it around nice and secure. You can also use like a grafting clip instead to hold these together, but I figured the tape should give a bit of extra protection from the graft drying out. One last thing I'm testing out is doing a whip and tongue graft to see if this works any better than the cleft graft. It's basically cutting an angled cut on both the potato and on the tomato, and then coming about a third of the way down and slicing down into the stem of both. Then you can just slide them together and the tongues should just hold them in place, ready to then wrap them up in the grafting tape. Since these potatoes have grown multiple stems, I figure I may as well just increase my chances and graft onto every stem. And I did lose track of where I planted all the different tomato varieties, so if all these grafts work, then we should end up with a plant that has several different tomato varieties all growing on the same plant, so that could be pretty cool. So the reason for planting the potatoes in small pots is so that I could easily bring them indoors into the shade while the grafts heal, which should hopefully just take around a week or so. I'm covering just one of these with a bag to increase the humidity and test out if this is something that they'll benefit from or not. But that's pretty much it, we'll see how it goes. And I thought I'd quickly mention this book here, which is a really helpful resource to have when learning to graft all sorts of things, like tomatoes, peaches, mangoes, apples, avocados, and even roses. So I'll leave a link below in case you'd like to pick up a copy for yourself. So after a day or two, all the stems were a little bit droopy like this one here, but I've just seen this morning that the rest of them are all standing up nice and straight, so that's a good sign. And one thing I have been doing is just misting the plants about twice a day. The ones under the bag are looking good too, but I have just seen that the potatoes are trying to grow back from the stems on some of them. So we'll go through and remove all of those so all the energy can just be focused on the tomatoes. Good news, the final tomato stem has stood up straight now. It might have taken a bit longer since it was just a bit bigger than the rest. For the plants under the bag, I want to start acclimatizing these now, so I'm just going to leave the bag half off. 
Today I'm just going to remove the bag entirely and I've moved them somewhere with a bit more sun just to acclimatize them. I don't think I'll use the bag cover again because turns out the other plants that didn't have the bag actually look a little bit healthier than the ones that did. So yeah, it didn't really have any benefit whatsoever. I'm curious to see how much they've come together. So I'm just going to unwrap a few of these to see how they look. Oh wow, look at that. So just after eight days it's healed really well. But yeah, I will leave the other ones wrapped just for now to give them a bit longer to strengthen up. Alright, so here I'm using a mixture of compost and potting mix, as well as a few sheep manure pallets, and we'll mix those together. The root system on this one looks really good, and I'm just teasing them out slightly, putting them in the pot, and then making sure that I keep the grafts above the surface, so the tomatoes don't put out their own roots. I'm mulching them well with straw, and then making a bamboo tower to support the plants as they grow. So that one's done, and I'll do the other one just the same. So today I'm removing all the grafting tape, and overall, even though all the grafts were successful, I would say that in the future I'll probably just do the cleft graft, since it was a lot easier. In saying that, when I did this whip and tongue graft here, it was a really crappy graft, but instead of redoing it, I thought I could just use it as a test to see if it would work, and it did. So in the right conditions, it seems that tomatoes are pretty straightforward to graft successfully, even if you don't do the best job. I thought today I'd give these a bit of diluted worm tea from my worm farm, and it's awesome to see there's some flowers on the tomatoes, and even some fruit forming on some of them too. Alright guys, so we've got some of these tomatoes ripening up now. We've got these beautiful orange ones all coming on now, which is cool to see. And these plants haven't been growing really vigorously throughout their life. You can see they don't have huge amounts of leaves on them and they're not sort of growing really tall. And I'm not too sure if that's because they're not on their own rootstock. You know, they are on a potato after all. The other thing it could be is that I've got multiple plants growing out of the one rootstock and so maybe if I had cut off all the rest of the shoots and just grown one tomato per rootstock, maybe then it would have grown sort of taller and bushier. I'm not too sure but I do like the look of having multiple types of tomatoes all on the one plant. I think it's really cool to have, you know, these orange ones as well as these longer ones at the back. They're a golden light tomato. And then these ones here are indigo pear drop, which is one of my favorite tomatoes. Why don't we give this a try and see what it's like. Mm. Juicy. <laughs> Tastes just as good as all my other tomatoes that I have growing in my garden. Nice and sweet and juicy. You can't beat a homegrown tomato or any homegrown produce really. Definitely a success in terms of the flavour. It's really good. So I'm looking forward to the rest of these ripening up and I'll show you definitely what these indigo pear drops look like when they're ripe. They're really beautiful tomatoes and I'm really curious to see if there are potatoes growing under there. So it's not quite ready to find out yet, but it will be soon. As the season continued on and the fruits ripened up, I was able to continue harvesting and enjoying the different types of tomatoes. My favourite one still being the indigo pear drop tomatoes because they're nice and firm and they've got a great balance of flavour between acidic and sweet. Plus they look really unique and have a pretty good shelf life too. So it turns out that I've got some red tomato varieties on here too, which is cool. And once all of these tomatoes are finished and the plants die back, that's when I'll be harvesting the potatoes. Well, hopefully there's some there to harvest. We'll have to wait and see. Okay, so these plants died off a little while ago, so let's harvest these and see if we've got anything in here. Oh, we do have some. <laughs> Oh wow, okay. <laughs> so there's not heaps of big potatoes in here by any means, but I mean, we do have potatoes, which is awesome. Uh, yeah, just not hugely big ones. Let's see if there's, oh yeah, there's a few more in there, deeper down. I think that's mostly all of them. Oh, <laughs> there we go. It's a bit of a modest harvest in this one, but I'm just stoked that this has worked. So let's go and check on the other ones and see if we can harvest some more. <laughs> check it out. There we go. Beautiful golden looking potatoes. Definitely not as many on this one. 
So there we go, just a little bunch of potatoes on this one. But I still find it pretty amazing that these grew just from the energy that the tomato plants provided. And I had fun doing it, so that's the main thing. And I think also, you know, if you were able to mound these up like you would normally with potatoes, then you would have ended up with possibly a lot more. But you can't really mound them up so well if you've grafted a tomato on the top because you don't want to bury the graft. But check out this graft here, it's actually still holding together. <sighs> Oh man, it's, that's tough, oh, finally. And it didn't even rip it out of the grafting spot. It broke it above it, so that was pretty strong. <laughs> so with this being my first time ever harvesting potatoes and tomatoes from the same plant, of course I have to get that final satisfaction of eating them together in one of the best food combinations out there, ketchup and fries, or as we would say in New Zealand, chips and sauce. I did freeze some of the tomatoes since they were ready before I could harvest the potatoes. Alright, time for the taste test. And this almost feels kind of wrong <laughs> since this all came from the same plant, but here we go. Mmm, <laughs> good crunch. That is so good. So satisfying. <laughs> and that ketchup is so incredibly good. I'm definitely going to have to keep making this instead of buying it because it's like um, nice and spicy, really good fresh taste. And if I could share one of these with you, I totally would. But I hope you found this video interesting. And if you did, you might also enjoy this video over here. So feel free to check that out. Thanks so much for sticking around to the end and I'll see you in the next one. So good. <laughs>